Okay, so this is our first titration lab. Um, I have my, oh, I have my 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. I have my unknown acid. This is one of my favorite labs because it's you know so rare that you get to put unknown on a label. Um, I've got my indicator, my phenolphthalein. I have a volumetric pipette, which I'm going to show you guys about in just a second. And over here, I've got my burette set up on this magnetic stirrer. I have my Erlenmeyer flask, and I have to grab a, a magnetic stir bar at some point before I start this lab. Okay, so let's start by um, getting a very specific amount of this uh, hydrochloric acid of unknown molarity into that Erlenmeyer flask. So I've attached my pipette bulb to my volumetric pipette. This one measures very specifically 10 milliliters, and as you guys can see right there, that is my volumetric graduation, right? So I'm measuring all the way up to that line. I want to stop exactly there. This is a very, very precise amount of, of acid that I'll be able to get from this. So I'm just going to, I, I push the A button on top to get the air out. I, I've made my negative pressure here. I'm going to press the S button for suction. Fills that little bulb, and then you slow way down as that bulb fills. Oof, nailed it, man. All right, um, let's, I think I might just be a teeny bit over, so what I'm going to do, I'm not actually going to empty it because I nailed it, um, but I would empty a tiny bit over the sink. I would never empty it back into my container in, in fear of contaminating the container of my unknown acid. Um, I do have a little bubble at the end there, so I don't know if my measurement might actually be a little bit off, but um, we're going to go with it anyway. I'm going to empty this into my Erlenmeyer flask. Yeah, it's being emptied into my Erlenmeyer flask. Um, now I have that little bit of, of acid at the end. I'm going to inflate my bulb. I'm going to press the S button for sucker while putting positive pressure on that bulb. I'm just going to spit all that acid down into that Erlenmeyer flask. I'm going to set this aside because we're going to use it again because I'm going to do three trials for this particular lab. Okay, now I have unknown acid inside of my Erlenmeyer flask. I'm going to add a drop or two of my indicator. Don't forget the indicator. You'd be amazed. Unsurprisingly, it is still transparent. Now, let's talk about the burette. The burette is something that you use in all titrations. Titration is a very common procedure in chemistry. Um, you'll see that there are graduations on this. Um, they are decreasing. So if we, if we start here at 50, they decrease as you go up. Um, I'm actually going to fill this all the way to the zero mark so that when we let fluid out of here, um, we'll know exactly how much fluid was let out of here. Before I do that, I have to do something called seasoning my burette. Um, and to do that, what I'm going to do, uh, here, uh, I'll talk about the parts really, really quick. Right here's the stop top, here's the shaft. That's the two parts of your burette. Um, I'm going to take my uh, titrating solution, my titrant, right, and I'm going to do what's called season the burette. So I've got my um, stopcock closed. I'm going to pour a bit of my, you know, you can use a funnel if you, if you want to. I'm going to pour a bit of the titrant solution. In this case, that's my sodium hydroxide in the top here. And you see that I have a little bit there. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this so it coats the entire inside of this. And what that does is it makes sure that any solution that might have been in this apparatus beforehand um, should be now replaced by my sodium hydroxide. I then allow that to flow out. Gives me the added benefit of, of giving me um, some amount of volume in this bottom here. I'm actually going to, because this one I know was dirty, I'm going to let a little bit more out until I'm totally empty. And then I'm going to refill it and do the same thing again. First time using this in a while. Okay, I have a little bubble there, um, but we'll talk about that in our post lab. So, so it looks like this is pretty good. I'm going to fill it all the way up to that zero mark. So 
So I've actually filled it up a little bit past my zero mark. Any other moment uh, during that filling process would have been fine because I've got graduation, but because I filled it all the way up past where that last graduation is, uh, I'm just gonna empty it. I'm gonna open my stopcock and I'm gonna empty this down to that zero mark, nice and slow. All right, I have exactly, um, uh, the, uh, it's now exactly at that zero mark. I'm gonna place it in my burette stand. I'm gonna grab that magnetic stir bar. I'll be right Here is my little magnetic stir bar. Um, I'm just gonna place it in my Erlenmeyer flask, trying not to splash that liquid up. I'm gonna place that in the middle. You see how that is drawn toward the center. Um, the issue is that the, the slowest speed on this is still pretty quick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to spray some water in there and make sure that that uh, stir bar is submerged. That will keep, hopefully, um, a bunch of that fluid from splashing out on me. Okay, um, I have my indicator in there. Uh, I've got my, my stir bar and my burette lined up. I'm actually gonna lower my burette a teeny, teeny bit so that it's just above the lip of my Erlenmeyer flask so I know that all that fluid's gonna go down in there. I'm going to turn on my stir. Presto. Now, when doing a titration, I want to go um, fairly slowly because I want to know exactly the amount of titrant that I had to add in order to, uh, to have my reaction. And we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, as we do our post lab. I'm probably going to speed this up for you guys. So I stopped it because you guys, you guys can't, couldn't, I don't think you guys could see it from that side. Um, I'm gonna rotate it so that the label is not on the front there. But when I start my titration again, you'll notice that I've got a slight change in color, right? It blinks pink and then it goes out. It blinks pink and then it goes out. I don't know if you guys can see that quite or not. Yeah, there you go. Um, so now I know that I'm getting pretty close to my neutralization point. Um, I'm going to slow my titration down even more. And there's a couple of ways. Um, this is, uh, we're, we're still a little ways away, but it should be pretty dang close now. You see how it's getting longer and longer? That pink drop is getting longer and longer. It's going to drop in there, it's going to take a moment to react, and then it's going to fade away as it reacts with my acid. Drop, pink. Drop, pink. I've always preferred to do it this way, um, where I'm, I'm adding it drop-wise. This is a very, very slow drop. I don't know if you guys can quite see it. From, see, it's a very, very slow drop. And it's getting really, very pretty close now. Um, there's a couple of ways that you can do it. You can do it drop-wise, where you're dropping it in really slowly. Um, colleagues of mine swear by the method where you turn the stopcock all the way around. Um, I actually have to, to turn my burette so that I have a handle on it. So they swear by the method where you, where you do one whole flip. I don't like that. I think that it releases more. Um, they say that it releases less. I think it releases more. It's hard to say. You know, they're, they were also very successful chemists. So who knows? I like the dropwise method, so I'm going to use the dropwise method. The issue with the dropwise method is that you've got to be really careful when you're starting it. especially when your solution is close. All right, I stopped it. Um, it's, it's got a, a very slight hint of pink. We'll see if it fades. Looks like it's gonna fade. Looks like I'm gonna have to continue to add some more drop-wise, but I'm really close now. Nope, looks like one more drop and we'll do it. I was fooled. pink. It's pink. Okay, so that's our first titration. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look up here. Oh, wow, it's actually a, a pretty easy number to read here, too. So here is our 
the number on our burette. I don't know if that light made it easier or harder. I'm going to also take a picture here with my phone. Um, but it looks pretty solid to me. Pretty good to me. Um, I took a picture of it. We're going to try it two more times. I'm just over the halfway mark. So I'm going to have to fill it up a little bit. I'm, I'm probably not going to fill it all the way now that I have some general idea of how much I need. So I'm going to do this two more times. You guys can watch. Enjoy. Um, I'm going to turn this camera back around. So I, of course, went over my zero mark um, when, I, when I refilled my burette. That's okay. I used this little beaker and I just emptied it out until I reached my zero mark. And now I'm at zero again on my beaker. You don't have to be at zero. Right, I, I only need enough liquid in my burette to, to make my measurement. I know I'm going to do two more though, so I've, I know I'm going to need it. Um, so I filled it all the way back up to zero um, so that we can get a, another good data set for number two. And then hopefully from there, um, we'll be able to do some, some computations. Uh, I, I've added my phenolphthalein. Now when I start my titration, I know that I need a, a pretty good amount of this titrant to start. So I'm going to... Um, I have a general idea of how much of this titrant I'm going to need. So I'm going to open my stopcock all the way and let that liquid really flow out of there. Um, this should speed up my, my titration by quite a lot. It's going to look weird because it's going to flash really bright pink for a moment um, as I approach that number. Uh, hopefully your first data point wasn't a huge outlier. I'm actually going to stop because you guys can see that I have splashed a bunch of liquid up and around this edge. It's going to give me some wonk data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, water and I'm just going to rinse that stuff down into my solution just to make sure that we're all, all of my solution is where I want it to be. Okay, I'm going to speed this up for you guys. Okay, I think that's pink. Time for trial three. Okay, so for this one, I filled up the burette. This is our, our last titration. I filled up the burette to 24.2. So I filled up the burette, oh, excuse me, 23.8. So I filled up the burette to 23.8. Keep that in mind. All right, I'm gonna start again. Again, I know an approximate amount that I'm, that I'm gonna need. Um, so this should go a, a little bit faster than the last couple. Okay, I think that that's staying pink. Our measurement, oh my gosh, good thing. Okay, that's it guys, thanks.